Hi and welcome back to DevExplaining channel. Today we are going to talk about Amazon Code Whisperer, compare it against GitHub Copilot and talk about AI assisted development in general. So it should be interesting. All the links that I'm going to show as always are in the description section of the video. So feel free to go there and read more. And of course, if you like the video, click the like button, share the link to video, subscribe to my channel for more and uh, feel free to leave any feedback in the comment section below or ask questions if you have any. So Amazon Code Whisperer is a recent addition to AI assisted coding tools. So how it works is that uh, we as a developer are working in the IDE and uh, while working the IDE context, meaning the code you are working on, is automatically sent to Amazon Code Whisperer and it's able to run some extra services, more on these later, and come back with code recommendations and choose to integrate with your code or, or not integrate. That's up to you. So uh, right now Code Whisperer supports a few IDEs and it supports Python, Java and JavaScript languages, but expect more to be supported in the future. So the IDEs that are supported are JetTrains tools, VS Code and then some AWS native tools like Cloud9 and Lambda Console. And this uh, kind of this can grow in the future. Uh, note that Code Whisperer right now is in preview state, so you can sign up, uh, you can be accepted, and then you can play with it for completely free right now. But it's a early access, so uh, expect it to grow and evolve, and it might be kind of a subscription based later, like uh, GitHub Copilot is. But today uh, you get to see it in action, so let's swap to my IDE and let's see how it looks like. So uh, first thing I wanted to just quickly show you how it works, uh, how the architecture works in real world. I want a hello world function, so the magic key for Code Whisperer is Alt C. I'm pressing that one or Command C in a Mac MacBook. I'm pressing that one and I get a suggestion and it's here. So I can see if there is more using the right and left uh, kind of cursors, but right now I only have one option, so let's go with that one. I choose it with tab, so tab is like, okay, let's use this one. And you can see that I only got the function structure, so I need more. I'll Alt-C to get more, another round trip to server, and I get a suggestion again. I have a few variations. <laughs> I can choose the exclamation mark or not, but I like it, so let's choose this one. And here we go. So uh, this was very quick run through of the Code Whisperer. I have a suggestion here. And then using the quick key Alt-C and Tab and cursor is I'm able to choose from the suggestions and, and accept those or do not use those as I choose to do. Okay. So how did I set this up? Well, I, I, I needed an extension in case of VS Code, extension, plugin, something. In AWS Native Tools, you might already have this set up, but in VS Code, I need AWS Toolkit installed, and then I get this extra tab here, and I can control my Code Whisperer from here. So in, in my case, I set up the pre-release pre key, so I'm able to play with it. I'm able to control if I want to pause the auto suggestions or not, and I'm able to run security scans. So if I have a little bit of code here, I can put the code to AWS servers and let them security scan it and figure out if there is something I should note. In my uh, short experience with this tool, I haven't yet have had any kind of um, kind of uh, notifications from the security scan. It's always passing. So I probably need more and dirtier code to play with this one. But just worth uh, mentioning that extra services are included here. And you can, of course, turn it off if you don't like to use it right now. Okay. So next segment of my video, we have now set it up and run a hello world. Um, what are the similarities with GitHub Copilot? So main similarity is that both are able to generate code based on comments. So let's try another example. I want a function uh, that generates fizzbuzz based on a parameter. Okay. So let's, I'll see this one. 
and we get a suggestion, hopefully. Of course, you always need network here, by the way. So if your network is low or goes down, <laughs> you get more stupid. <laughs> so then you cannot use this one. On the other hand, you cannot use, if your network is down, you cannot Google, you cannot use Stack Overflow uh, answer, so you will be anyway stupider. <laughs> But uh, just worth mentioning that you do need network access and you are sending your code to remote third-party server, no matter how secure. But if you are working in professional capacity, your security policies might be immediately stopping you there. So this might be something you're not allowed to do. So just pay attention to this part because the more traditional auto-suggestion tools are not necessarily communicating with servers. So right now you are sending anything in your project third-party server. By the way, if your project is very big, this might also take a little bit of time. So there is some caveats to that. But on high level, they work the same way. So both are sending your coding context to the third-party server. Both are uh, using your code and comments as kind of hints. And the better comments and more code you have, the better suggestions you will be getting and both are able to provide you with one or more suggestions typically and then you get to choose if you accept these if you want to play with these or not that's up to you you will still be in control so you will decide if you integrate these with your solution or not okay what else is common well both are uh, available as ide extensions and both are having uh, AI model in the server uh, that's getting more and more clever every uh, every time they retrain the model. And they are, they are uh, just meaning that what I'm showing today might be a bit better next month with both tools. So they are learning more and becoming more mature all the time. And uh, both are eating open source code from open source repositories right now. So this might be one area where there is like problems with this one. Is it whitewashing open source code? How much is it okay to grab from open source and put under some other license? Is it okay to grab individual letters, individual wor words, individual lines of code, function, shapes, forms? What is okay? What is acceptable? Both tools are theoretically uh, not copy pasting the open source code. They are putting it like an, in, a, in a machine that spits out uh, generated code. But uh, again, uh, where is the boundaries? That's a good question. Okay. What are the differences between both tools? So I have another video on GitHub Copilot. So as I mentioned, it's a good video. Go and look it up if you're interested. But I can summarize here. What are the main differences that I'm able to see? Well, Let's observe them. So uh, theoretically, uh, this uh, GitHub, uh, so, sorry, uh, theoretically, this uh, Amazon Code Whisperer shines with Amazon APIs. And that would make sense, right? So if I say uh, a function that fetches an object from S3 bucket based on T, so theoretically, I should get better answers uh, for a comment like this one. On the other hand, uh, this is quite a trivial task, so I'm not sure. Uh, probably GitHub Copilot might have found the same answer. But uh, there is a bit more emphasis on AWS API, so if you work a lot on top of these, Code Whisperer might be a little bit better for your needs, or it might uh, give you a bit more clear answers for these needs at least, a, bit, a little bit better, hopefully. Another difference is uh, you can already see that it's a bit more kind of cautious and clunky uh, when I'm asking for uh, recommendations or suggestions. I'm getting like function profile and implementation separately. So it's a bit more cautious. And I remember that GitHub Copilot is giving me bolder, larger answers. And both have kind of uh, their benefits. But sometimes I've seen already that Code Whisperer might give me bits and pieces that are not compatible together, whereas uh, Copilot is giving me larger answer that might be uh, crap, but at least it's a wholesome crap. So it's giving me larger bits that uh, typically work, like uh, the, the block is not 
fighting with itself, so it's working better as a whole, but the whole might still be crappy. That's, I think, the best answer I can give you there. One difference that I noticed is that there is difference in secrets handling, because I'm typically quite evil and I test these tools with things like S3 secret key. This is another mode where you can use Copilot, so I can press Alt C and see what it comes up with. It's actually already digging me some suggestions, but you can see that it's kind of giving me this uh, idea that, okay, this is a secret, so here is the shape of it, but not the real secret from anybody else's code. But GitHub Copilot would eagerly give me some secret keys. I did notice uh, this one is fun because sometimes I get to see secret keys like so, and sometimes it's kind of catching it properly. Let's see, weather secret, weather API key. I was able to once get somebody else's secret key like so, but typically uh, Code Whisperer is being a little bit more clever and it's uh, detecting that this is a secret, so let's not copy the value here, instead just put the kind of form and shape. So I like this one. I would expect these, uh, these AI tools to be uh, learning to be better with the secrets management, meaning they shouldn't be sending my secrets or using those to train the models or, or giving those as suggestions. They should be somehow filtering these out. And I see Code Whisperer is doing a better job with it than Copilot when I tested it, but some time, time back. Okay, so here is a few differences. More differences, obviously, the services coming up. Uh, I would expect that both, uh, both uh, code assistants would in the future be better with uh, the extra services, and there might be some va variety. But right now, here is one concrete example. So Code Whisperer is having this server-side security scan and supposedly giving me some feedback on my code. If I do obvious kind of security vulnerabilities, it should be able to catch them up. Okay, so those might be differentiators, but right now it's not typically giving me a, a lot of feedback. A hard-coded credentials, well, it caught this one. I shouldn't use S3 ask access key as hard-coded credential. It's absolutely right. So good catch. Some extra value from the security scan already. Okay, so. I wanted to show you a section called quirks and oddities. Okay, so if I just keep on pressing these uh, suggestions, it, I'm, I'm starting to get really uh, a lot of repetition, but also a lot of really weird kind of things. So obviously you can see that probably don't do this because uh, I already got what I needed. But in case you are looking for it to generate test code or anything else, this is getting really random over time. So. <laughs> Without any other hints, it's now creating me some daytime functions and uh, test code for the daytime functions. But just don't do this, it gets really weird. Uh, I've been having some fun just pressing this and seeing what the AI comes up with if I don't give it enough proper hints. This is because it's using all your code in your project as kind of hints. So it's kind of, if you don't have a lot of suggestions or a lot of sensible code, it's going to eat your irrational code or, or uh, just generate something out of thin air. And ob obviously it's not going to be very clever then. So, last segment of my video, let's wrap things up. I wanted to give you some ideas on AI-assisted coding. Some of my colleagues hate this. So they are saying that uh, doesn't make any sense. Nobody would ever use this one. And some of people are saying that, oh no, does this mean that uh, there is not, not going to be any developers in the future? Uh, will this make us unemployed? Well, I don't really agree with either of these viewpoints. So people who are saying that this is useless are missing some facts. We have been raising the abstraction level all the time, and we have been finding more better force multipliers to do our job faster, because the routine coding I'm not really writing code anymore. That's not my work. My work is actually figuring out a problem and solution, coming up with a design, and then I enjoy uh, if something else is writing the code for me, or somebody else in some cases. 
but I, I like to spend more time with the problem, uh, right problem statement and uh, solution principle and requirements. And then uh, I'm not really interested in spending time with tapping keyboard to write the code in some language or another. I said that we have been raising the abstraction level. We have, because people used to use uh, punch cards. And then at some point we got assembler language. And that's the machine language. Uh, then we got very lazy abstraction level on top of that called C and C++. And we got even more lazy abstraction levels like Java, Kotlin, Scala, JavaScript, Python. And they are doing so much on the background. You are just writing English um, in many cases, following some syntax on top of that. We've got low code tools right now. So many of the tools are raising the abstraction level, making us more efficient. So we, we write and do less. We, we are uh, going more towards the design. And uh, that's why a lot of people are now software designers, not coders or software developers or something like that. So emphasis is on design and architecture and kind of uh, also acceptance criteria. So emphasis is more on that. And then I'm very happy if a machine will write my code. But it's not there quite yet, not this year. It is for me when I use GitHub Copilot extensively, I was happy with the answers to specific needs that I had. So instead of going to Stack Overflow to figure out how to do Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion function or how to calculate some uh, points in radius when I'm doing some map software, I'm very happy to just be able to describe my need and get some suggestions and then evaluate those and get a good one. And kind of uh, it's uh, confirming some vague thoughts that I ha had in my mind and I'm able to skip going from out from my ID, just do all my work there. So that's making me very, very happy and actually much more productive in many cases. But it's still every now and then it's giving me really stupid things. And then I need to kind of uh, review those suggestions and be very cautious for the security and performance issues, for example. I would consider this a little bit like pair programming with a junior developer uh, right now. So uh, it can be very useful mostly for kind of um, shaking your brains a little bit and giving you multiple potential answers for the problem. And uh, might be that none of them are right. But that's kind of my experience right now. There is a lot of potential because the tools can get better. There's nothing stopping stopping them from getting better. And I would assume they get better over time. So the secrets management is a very easy thing to, thing to take care of. They will be learning from your choices as well. So let's say that they show thousand developers the same, same kind of options. They will start figuring out what gets chosen. And they might even be training themselves based on individual developer style and figuring out what's good for them. So I would expect that there is a lot of room for potential. So what you are seeing right now is just like the laughing version, but it, it will be, be brutally better. But there will still need, there will still be need for design and security. And I would assume that um, uh, performance, security and design areas, the non-functional requirements definitely uh, will keep developers busy for a long time will take a little bit of time more until AI tools will be able to replace that one. But for now, I consider it my stupid pair programming buddy who is able to give me rapid feedback when I don't have a real pair programmer with me. Remember that in pair programming also the main benefit is learning new things. So both parties are learning uh, by combining two brains. And with GitHub Copilot, you get a little bit of the benefit, but not that much. But over time, I expect Copilot and Code Whisperer to start learning as well and becoming more clever. And that's when they become really scary. <laughs> okay, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Don't be a stranger. Drop comments, uh, like the video if you like it, subscribe to my channel and share the link to the video if anybody else should be seeing it. My channel will thank you immensely and it will give me energy to pump up, pump up more videos for your enjoyment. Let me know also if there is something you didn't like about the video. Valuable feedback for me. Thank you. See you in the next one. Bye bye.